Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I'm not in the dark, you know. I know who is here. I know the reasons they're here. There are some here who would doubt that an angelic presence could inhabit a human being and speak in this fashion. You would doubt this and yet, if I asked, do you believe in love? You would say, well, of course I do, I can see it around you. Then believe in this. For what you are seeing is a process of love. Universal love. Part of a system that is love transcending. Even the quantum hologram responds in each of you. When Kryon comes in. There is a relationship issue that has been described and shown on the screen by the teacher Peggy. Profound it is. Now I ask you to put it between us. Do you think we have a relationship? Is it important to you? Well now let me give you the rest of the story. You think for a moment that you have come here to hear something odd, perhaps, this channeling on the stage, perhaps. But I will tell you, if you would open your heart just a little bit to the teachings that you've been given even to this day and see the strings attached, you're going to remember me. <laughs> because I said goodbye to you the other side of the veil right before he leaned into the wind of birth and came into this planet. That was me. I was the last energy you saw. I'll be the first one you see when you leave this planet and come back in the hall of honor in the cave of creation. The, the energy of crown belongs to Gaia. Part of the family of Archangel Michael. Angelic just like you are. You do remember me at some level. And those who would pick up the transcriptions which you call the books and you would go through them, you say, well this, this resounds to me and I, I understand it. For whatever reason I can feel it, I'll tell you it's because you remember me. I remember you and that's why I'm here. What a time this is. There was a time on this planet where this could not be accomplished. The idea that a human being could meld with spirit in front of others. And they would accept it. And you didn't have to do it. And closed doors. Because of the persecution of those who didn't believe in such a thing. There are those who would still say this is a work of what they call the devil. The mythology of the dark side, they say. And that's what will keep them away from the love of God. Little do they know that the God they worship is huge, much larger than they've been told. And here you are, and I say to you, remember me. In the darkest of the darkest of times, I'll tell you, there is a door you can push on. And the energy of this angel will come pouring in. <clears throat> along with all the helpers and along with all the energies that you've been promised. I know there's technique. I know there's phases. I know there's learning and there's academics involved in this, but I will tell you it all boils down to one thing. What is your belief that you remember me? If you can remember me, then perhaps you can remember you. And that's the key. 
Who were you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> the teacher Peggy says so often. Can you remember the qualities of cryon being in you? Perhaps that's a stretch, but I will tell you that's the way it was. For Cryon is a group entity, just like you. Part of the cosmic intelligence of all things, just like you. And when you start to remember, and you start to put these strings together, you're going to remember who you are. And that, my friends, is when mastery is available. As my partner said, today there's even a layer of DNA that helps you to remember. That is activated when you say, Dear Spirit, tell me what it is I need to know. I'm ready to remember. And that goes into effect. That's the profundity of the system that revolves around free choice. Oh, you can sit there all your life. And you can say, I'm, I'm very pleased with my life. I'm, I'm pleased with my belief system. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't do what, what you folks believe. But it's okay for me, you might say. And I'll tell you that the angelic realm just sits there on your shoulder. Loves you anyway. It doesn't matter how far you go. If you've acknowledged the Creator, and that's all you can do, the angelic realm is there and loves you just as much. But there's so much more, so much more life enhancement. Oh, let me remind you. I want to go back with you for a moment. The grand system has a series of energetic phases on this planet that are greater than a thousand years each. And one of them is coming to a close and another one opening on 2012. The ancients in their observatories of the sun and the moon knew it. And it is not taught correctly. But it will be. If you would dig into the Mayan phases of energy, you will find this oscillation of Gaia. An actual vibratory shift of thousands of years where it sets a stage for the potentials of humanity. And we've told you this before. 2012 is the end of a very long phase, over a thousand years, moving into what the Mayans and the Aztecs and the Toltecs say were the new sun. The new sun. A time of promise and hope where Gaia begins to vibrate in a whole different way and responds to the humans on the planet now. Think for a moment of what 1987 brought you in the harmonic convergence. You were headed for the Armageddon that has not and will not take place. The end of humanity, your choice, free choice, and that was the energy of the moment. But you circumvented it. You went beyond it. You changed it. And we celebrate that change all the time. We celebrate it in the 1111. And here's an esoteric question. Dear Cryon, if the Armageddon had taken place, if the end of the world had taken place, if humanity ceased to have existed, what would happen in 2012? And I will tell you, the time clock of Gaia is the time clock of Gaia. And the very energies that were seen to have existed would still happen. There'd be a whole lot of happy plants <laughs> and no humans. Animals would start again. The experiment would continue. 
But that's not the way of it, is it? No. Instead, you will be treated. Indeed. To a marker which starts the whole thing. Gradually, the crystalline grid will vibrate higher. Because it is affected by those who walk upon this planet of enlightenment. Oh, there is so much to tell you about this. But here is the big one. All those alive right now know of their quest. We have old souls in the room. Do you feel the Lemurian energies, do you? I know you do. That's who's here. Oh, you may deny they ever existed. <laughs> and there are those here who will. How does it feel to be one of them? <laughs> not me, Cryon, I'm not. Oh, yeah. You go inside. You remember. Old souls you are. With an awakened interdimensional sense that is going to change this planet. That's why you came. That's why you're in this room. Listening to the weird guy. Because <laughs> you know, don't you? Doesn't matter what age you are either. I don't know who's here. I know some of you are lamenting when you look in the mirror and you say, Why me? Why do I look like this? Why am I this way? Why am I this age? It would have been so much better if it had been different. I could do so much more as a younger person looking different. Oh. Well, I want you to stop for a minute. I just want you to stop for a minute. I want to tell you about 10,000 angels who are loving you right now exactly the way you are in the right place at the right time. There's a reason for this. You can work the way you are, the age you are, the way you look. This planet needs you this way because you can still send the light. Send it to the forgotten continent, Africa. They need you right now. Right now. Send it to Palestine, which is the large area we say that you have renamed Lebanon and Israel. Parts of Jordan and Egypt. That's what you can do. Because you're a lighthouse. And we need your wisdom. We may even need your size. Listen to me. There's a reason for everything. You are known by God and loved the way you are. Do you remember me yet? I told you this might happen when you came in. Look at that. Look at that timeline. I said, look at the propensities of what you might do. What you might become is grand. And you're sitting here saying, well, what happened? It's not grand. And we're saying, oh, it's very grand. <laughs> you don't see it like we do. Within these times, there are smaller dispensations that we like to break up into 25 years. You call that a generation. It's not a 12 base number, like so much of the calendars of the ages. But we do it because it's a seven. There's divinity in the generation. Now take a look. From 1987 to 2012 is 25 years. Now go project 2012 to the next dispensation of 25 years and it's going to be an 11 year. There's reasons for all of these things. Let me tell you about the dispensation you sit in. The Armageddon dispensation is what you've just passed. Up till 1987. Healing of the kind that you have asked for and have come for this very day was far and few between. Oh, there was masters walking the earth and there were healers. Of course there were. But when you compare it to what's available today, it's almost like the dark ages. I'm talking about the 60s, 70s, 80s. The demarcation the 1111 of the harmonic convergence changed it all. This was permission, another marker. 
of tremendous advancement and acceleration in knowledge, in awareness, in energy. And that's what you've been experiencing. As the teacher Peggy, she knows. Look at what when she went through in order to arrive at the place where she could be given the information. <coughs> and when she had gone through her purification, was ready to settle down and see the strings. That's when they started coming to her. Profound applications of energy is only the start of that. This particular age you are in, starting in 87 and going to 2012, this generation is a stepping stone to 2012. It's when you're supposed to make the difference. It is supposed to be where you'll set up peace on earth. And you're saying, well, we're not doing a very good job. Would you stop judging yourself and look around? Who is it who has exposed the darkness on the planet in these last years? It has been you and those like you. The prayer warriors, the ones who send the light. Now you're aware of the enemy, aren't you? The old, old energy of this planet that wants to hold you back. Free choice it is with those humans who choose it. And they will, and they choose sides. And there will be a battle. Do not fear this battle. It is one you were born for. Lighthouse, when the battle begins, the lighthouse is the one who says, It's here. I strike the light. The lighthouse is the one who says, I'm built for storms. Here it is. Let's go to work. The lighthouse is not the one who runs in the closet and fears this battle. And it may not be the battle you expect of swords between human and human. It may be an entirely different battle. It may be a metaphoric battle. We've called it the Bridge of Swords. Since 1989, when we came in and began this channeling, we've spoken of the battle on the bridge, and here it is, and you're sitting in it, you're part of it. 25 years, 1987 to 2012, and this is when information is being given to you profoundly on the planet to those special ones who can see it. Ask the teacher Barbara about the snowflakes and she will tell you this. These are energies that she sees as part of her clairvoyance. Difficult to explain truly what they are. Interdimensional energies, part of which and part of whom are yours and Gaia's. Because they are interdimensional, they're in a quantum state, they're connected with everything. So what she sees sometimes is a portrait the way the earth is, the way you are, the way things are. She has learned to read them. And now ask her how they've changed since 1987 and what she now sees that she could not and did not back then. And she will be the first to tell you, oh, it's, it's a new energy on this planet. Well, wait till 2012. Oh, there will be no flash bulb go off. No angelic celebration. The disco ball of the new age will not descend. <laughs> A marker. God is slow, but you knew that, didn't you? That's why you're here. And it's changed the way healing works. And some of you know what I speak. Those who would be interested in healing in the past would say, well, we've got the body and the mind and the spirit. Let's say, so many times those on the body would come to the healer and say, I've got disease and I want it healed. And the healer would say, well, you really, you really ought to have a whole body balancing. And they say, no, thank you, just a disease. <laughs> it's not going to work that way anymore. It's already started to move off of that peg. You see, it just can't happen. You can't, you can't have a jalopy in the backyard and expect to put new tires on it and suddenly it's a race car. And that's the way we're seeing this. It's a whole body experience. It goes with the territory. And as earth begins to vibrate higher, all the things around it, all the systems that have been inactive that start to activate will create something different than you expect. Different in that... 
healing will not be the same. There are those who say, well, I want a lot of energy. Please give me, can you, I want to go to the healer and get a lot of energy. What about balancing yourself? What about all the other parts of your body? No, thank you. Just the energy. That's all I want. <laughs> You're not going to be able to do that. There'll even be problems with the activation from the laser. The products that you see in the corner, they won't be the same for all. And let me give you something now that I've told you is coming. It's coming and it's here. And I will tell you this, that those who marry themselves with the concept of taking certain kinds of supplements that have been laser enhanced will benefit from their consciousness and their belief in it as much as the product itself. What I'm telling you is this, two human beings side by side taking the same supplements from the same source that has been given to Yah E, one will work and one will not depending upon their consciousness and their approach to it. And there you have it. We've told you before. They won't understand it. Why does it work for you? It doesn't work for me. They'll see pro profound results, sometimes even life-saving results, to those who understand and believe in it. And have a little training in what it's supposed to be doing. And they see a little bit of the spark of the divine as they remember. There are those who were dealing with the mind. They say to the healer, I am filled with fear. I've gone to the psychologist. I'm filled with fear. If only I could get out of fear, I'd be happy. And the healer would say, well, let's take care of everything. Let's start a process where you're going to learn about yourself and take care of everything. And they say, no, thank you. Just the fear. I'll be okay. It's not going to work that way. They'll be the same ones that say, I'm angry all the time. I can't control. I just, things make me mad, they say. If I could just get rid of that, healer. Can you do something about the anger? I got a pill for that, doctor. <laughs> just the anger, nothing else. I'll be fine, you know. That kind of compartmentalization does not work anymore. Why do you think there are so many phases of the training of the teacher begging? It is complex. It is magnificent. And it's a whole body experience. There are those who will come to you and say, I'm so tired of the duality. I don't know what to do. There's, there's so much darkness on earth. I have so much trouble watching the news. It depresses me. If only I could feel joy in my life. Can you give me some joy? You got a pill for that, doctor? And the answer is no. It doesn't work that way anymore. You're going to see this more and more. Whole body experience. Those who want spiritual work, some will come and say, I want to increase the godliness in me. Some will say, I want more awareness. Can you give me more awareness? If I was more aware, they said, then, then everything would fall into place. Really? Awareness without balance? <laughs> I don't think that's balanced at all. And neither will you, if you had it. That person who asked for no fear. You know what would happen if you were able to give them no fear? A fearless human being. You might have a raging monster on your hands. Arrogant in all ways. No, it doesn't balance out, does it? Spirit doesn't give healings that way anymore. You're not going to give them, get them in that fashion. I want to take you someplace and introduce you to someone. There's a light worker. 
This light worker is going to be nameless. I'm going to make it a, a female. That's the energy of Kion. That's what I want to do. I want to introduce you to this light worker and I want to tell you this is the definition of healing. First of all, as you approach her, you feel good. One human to another, you feel good. You don't know why, but you feel good. And you've met her yet, and you've already made up your mind, this is a good person, I like this person, I can hardly wait to meet this person. She radiates the love of God. This is important, she's not evangelistic, she may not even seem spiritual. She doesn't wear religion on her sleeve. She's sweet. She reminds you of something you can't really put your finger on. You don't know what it is. Is it mother? Is it... What is it? I'll tell you what it is. You're remembering the love of God. Because her strings are out, you see. She knows how to do it. You get in her field, and you feel it. Her strings are out, you see. The light worker is balanced. She's balanced. She's centered. She listens. She's interested in you. She makes you feel good. She has no agenda. You don't feel like she's got a story that she wants to force upon you or anything like that. She's just wide open. Oh, don't you just love being around her? To some of you, it's, it's the mother you always wanted. It's, to others of you, it's the mother you had. Right, there it is again. What is that feeling? What is that? That's the love of God. She's got her strings out. And it's not pushy. It's not evangelistic. It's none of those things. Those are invitation strings. You saw it on the screen. That's the way it works. She's intuitive. She knows who you are. She knows what you need. She knows so much. Her strings are out. There's something about her body inside there. And I'll give you the answer. I'll tell you that the DNA has been activated. It's resounding. She's not aging very much either. She's on this earth, seeming like one foot in one dimension and the other foot in the other. Even the cells of her body know it. They know it. She's got her strings out. Intuitive, she knows where to send the light. And you might say, well, how could, she, how could any human being know that much? Where to send the light? There's so much going on. She knows them by name, who to send, where to... And I'll tell you this, no, she understands something we're going to talk about a little more at some day. She knows all about cosmic intelligence. That's where there's a, there's a pool of energy that you can dip into and be part of that knows everything. And you don't have to know the specifics. Brian, that's hard for me. I gotta know the specifics. <laughs> really? You're going to build this race car called Enlightened DNA. You're going to have mastery surging through your veins. You're going to turn on that car and you're going to tell me that you're going to go to the manual to figure out the automatic transmission? I don't think so. You just want to go, don't you? Cosmic intelligence is the engine and you don't even have to think about it. 
Those in mastery know how to use the cosmic intelligence engine. That's their intuition. That helps them to turn left and to turn right, where to pray for, when to assemble the group and pray, and when not to. When to say the right thing, when not to speak at all. Cosmic intelligence hooked to the master plan. And that's because she had her strings out. She's handled duality a long time ago, and the way she did it, she, she put it in the back seat. That's how she did it. It's with her for life. That polarity of human and divine is there forever. In the back seat, irritating her every day. But it's never in charge, you see. And when others would be fearful, she recognizes where the fear comes from. It comes from what we call the second brain. It doesn't come from the head, it comes from the stomach. <laughs> Lower energy. Fear starts to come up and she intercepts it, puts it in the back seat. She knows all about it. Knows all about it. She's balanced, you know. Anger? She doesn't have any. Anger. You know what anger is? I will tell you. Raw anger. I'm not talking about being strong. Raw anger is not part of a light worker. It's not part of an enlightened master. Think about it. Every time raw anger appears, what do you want to do? You want to go back and apologize that it happened. <laughs> Oops, it slipped. <laughs> That's your way of saying... The duality suddenly popped out. I'll just put it back in there, I'm sorry. She's got it in the back seat, doesn't pop out. Anger. She's controlled, she doesn't get anger. She's disappointed. She has compassion. Oh, don't you just want to be with her? Just walk next to her, just side by side. This is what the masters had of the earth. Go back and study your history. All the children want to be with them. The adults just loved them. They put their hand on their heart. But oh, to be next to this person, this man, this woman. He just felt the love of God in him. That's what the masters of earth all had. And I'm telling you, human being, this is what you are headed for. Now let me tell you what's going on inside her body. Disease? No, 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 no. You see, it can't attach itself. Because it's not part of her program. She's got her strings out. She talks to her cellular structure. It's not in the dark. It listens to the boss. She's the boss. How many of you have talked to your cells lately? Do you realize that all the enlightened DNA is, is in your toe, in your elbow, it's in your arm, it's in your brain. It's everywhere. It's not just in there. It's in the consciousness. Do you realize that if you talk to your cells regularly and they, they understand who's talking, disease will not touch you. Do you understand? That's what mastery is. We wouldn't tell you this unless it were so. The development of Yahweh's products are all part of a grand plan even for the pets <laughs> to keep you here longer to help advance you so that you can do these things on your own they trigger certain parts of your body this is Lemurian technology understand truly what it is I'll tell you something else the Lemurians understood and that's what you now call tachyon which was not called that back then. You found it in the Temple of Relu Rejuvenation. It was the pre-step before you got zapped. <laughs> Lemurians understood interdimensional things. And the invitation is for you too also. That's what's going on in her body. Mastery. All the things that you heard, the list of those who had asked for, disease, fear, it's not there. Energy, she's got plenty of it. A 
I'll give you the last one. She knows who she is because she remembers. Someone would say, well, tell me more about this person. Does she have a mate? Does she have a partner? I'll tell you. This one? No, she does not. I was saying, you might say, well, that's sad, and I want to tell you about her. Let me tell you about her. Because she remembers who she is, and she says to herself every day when she looks at her, I am sufficient. It is well with my soul. If alone is the way I'll do my work best, and that is the way I'll do my work. Thanks be to God, I am who I am. She has the love of God in her life, and she is not alone. And she is not lonely either. Oh, she enjoys those humans who come over and enrich her life. The intimacy that might be enjoyed. The relationships. But at the end of the day, when she goes home alone, she says, every time she walks into that place, she says, I am that I am. And I need only what I have. She's giving permission and free choice for anything to take place. But she is not lonely. And she's not desperate. And she's not despondent because she remembers. That's what happens when you fall in love with a human race. Who are you? That's our message. That's all we got. This could be the message to the very end until there is no more message oh there will be those who will carry cry on even long long after my partner is with me and their, their message will be the same it will be about mastery enhancing and a celebration of how you all created peace on earth and I just opened the door for you to look into the future a future you can't even consider now because of what's going on on the planet. And I'll tell you, the sun's going to come out. But it's not going to do it without everyone in here caring about it during the time of the battle, which is now. When's the last time you sent your light to those who are not as fortunate, to those in survival, to those who do not have food on their tables and are worried about their lives? this night. Oh. Lighthouses, do your work. <laughs>